there welcome back to my channel my name is Vera and in today's video I'm going to be setting up my spreads for November I'm very excited for this one because even though it is coral yet again the colors are different and they're more vibrant because we are going into kind of spring summer which means it is time to whip out those really nice bright funky colors all right well you know the drill let's start off by flipping through my october spreads so previous month and i know you're probably sick of seeing all of these spreads by now but i'm not sick of them so let's just have a quick look it's interesting for you to see this part because now that i've actually gone through most of the month of october i have actually filled in quite a few of my spreads so they're not just blank and it does show you that i do actually use my bullet journal instead of just you know doing it for fun and pretty spreads which is also true but i do use it it has a functional purpose now this is my original november cover page it did give me kind of a more funfetti vibe rather than a coral vibe which is not what i was going for so i decided to pivot and just use this page as a testing page and as you can see i'm pointing to everything that i tested out i am going to go for this yellow font that i underlined there as well as the pink coral on the top left so let's get into it. Now for my cover page, now that I've tried it once before, I was less stressed going into it, which is good because typically when you go into starting something, it can be a little bit stressful because you're just like, oh no, pen to paper on a blank page in a nice journal. You don't want to mess anything up and you have this idea of perfectionism and you just want it to look really, really aesthetic. So that first page there is just an indication that, you know, some ideas just don't always work out. And sometimes you just got to start on a new page because I had a review page before that page. I couldn't just rip it out either so I'm just gonna leave it there as a reminder that not everything is gonna turn out the way you want it to and sometimes it's okay to start again now you've just seen me do my font for the cover page and I'm going to go in with some different colored acrylographs to do dots on the font now mini trigger warning I guess for some people this is a trigger I'm not sure but there are going to be lots of little dots all over my page all the time so if that makes you uncomfortable please bear that in mind anyway I'm going to use the colors pink and yellow as I mentioned earlier and let's start off by drawing some coral. The coral this month is going to be a very kind of rough edged coral unlike my smooth edged coral that I'd been doing previously and I'm going to start off at the top. I love this particular acrylograph because it goes on more of a transparent color and then once it dries it goes more opaque which is very very nice and it's a very cool effect that I liked seeing happen and then I'm going to also go in with five different other variations of pink and yellow to do some coral diagonally across the page. Now because I'm doing the coral diagonally I was thinking to myself well how do I make this work I've decided to fill the entire page with a pattern of coral because I thought that was going to look the nicest for each of the coral I kind of vary moving my hand around the page I just form them making sure that they're all seeing relatively the same width and then making sure that they stem out nicely trying to kind of go for a rounded look once you like look at the whole coral all together but you know it doesn't always work out. I tried to look at the previous corals that I've drawn just to kind of make the next one a little bit different but of course because of the nature of this particular style everything is going to look relatively the same with a couple differences if you really wanted to look up close. I'm going to do five different corals down the page and now I'm going to show you a couple of details when I fill in the dots on the page. Now for the dots it's very simple I'm going to use the pink color on the bottom and the yellow on the top just kind of imitating where the light would be shining down on top of the coral so you'd kind of get it the darker side underneath and the lighter side on top because I have two different color pinks I'm just going to alternate the two pinks so the darker pink goes as dots on the lighter pink and the lighter pink goes as dots on the darker pink and then I'm just going to vary the different yellows now unfortunately on camera and also in person the yellows are kind of similar in hue so when you put dots there is a slight difference but you know you could just stick with one yellow because it's all gonna look the same for the yellow corals I'm going to use both of the pinks on the bottom just alternating them because they do stand out quite nicely on yellow and as for the yellow dots I'm going to use the yellow that's the furthest away from the base yellow so that you can hopefully see them on the coral itself and then at the end I'm actually going to add in some white dots with my white acrylograph just to add a little bit more fun here's me adding some more coral to the rest of the page now I did hesitate on whether I should put more coral on the left page ultimately I've decided not to although maybe I'll do it off camera anyway let's 
let's get into some more practical spreads for this month. I'm going to be going in first with my monthly log. Now, I know last month I went back to my calendar spread because calendar spreads usually are my favorite kind of monthly log. However, I did mention that I kind of enjoyed using a vertical spread. And guess what? This month I've decided to go back to it. I like the idea of having a vertical spread because you can actually divide your page in two, having one side for personal tasks and one side for work tasks. Recently, I got in as an Archer and Olive ambassador, meaning that I'm going to have deadlines as an ambassador, but I'm also going to have personal tasks and I don't really want them to mix on the page. So I'm going to be able to have ambassador tasks on one side and personal tasks on the other side, which I think is a nice idea. Then I'm going to put a line underneath each of the weeks of the month and I'm going to alternate starting with the pink going down to yellow. You'll see for the rest of this journal that I'm going to be using very specific colors going down from pink to yellow every single time. And I'm also going to be doing some really fun little Dutch doors, but you won't really see that in this video. You'll have to come back next week for my weekly plan with me because that's where I'm going to be doing it. Once I've done those lines, I'm going to move on to my habit tracker. Now this month, my habit tracker is going to be comprised of six different habits. I haven't quite decided what habits I'm going to be tracking simply because at the time of filming, it is still like the 15th of October, which um, <laughs> how do I know what I'm going to be tracking at the beginning of November? I still got 15 days left. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to include my font. This time I'm not going to put any dots into the white lettering. It doesn't really add anything, any value. Something that I don't really mention in a lot of my videos is the planning behind placement on each of my pages. You can generally see where the pencil marks are and then I'm just going to use a pen over the top to do everything but in reality there's a whole thought process behind it and just because I have a grid spacing cheat sheet doesn't mean it actually helps me all that much especially for small details like this. For this habit tracker I actually had to go in with a pencil and do it multiple times just to get the spacing right and I had to count and erase and count and erase multiple times. So if you think that I'm going straight in with a pen without thinking behind it and you think wow she's really fast at doing this how does she come up with these ideas and not have to think too much there's a whole thought process that goes behind this for this habit tracker I'm just going to have three columns the center column is going to be reserved for some coral decorations because as you can see at the moment there's no space for coral so I figured I'd put them in the middle of this page for each of my habits I'm going to list out the days of the month as well and as you can see I made a small little mistake on this particular calendar I put one on a Monday but in November the first day of the month is a Tuesday so I am going to have to get rid of this and to do that I'm going to use this a black acrylograph as a blackout instead of a whiteout to black out the one at the very beginning of the calendar. The way this habit tracker works is I'm going to use my white pen to color in the number in a circle form once I've done the habit on that particular day and that's what the habit tracker looks like. Next I'm going to add in some coral and this is another angle of me painting on the coral. As you can see See, my hand just kind of shakes across the page so that I can achieve that bumpy effect of coral. And I feel like this is closer to what coral actually looks like because in the wild, coral is textured and rough. So, you know, I feel like it's a better representation. Also, I don't know if you can tell, acrylograph does go on a little bit transparent, but as you can see, as it's drying, it goes more opaque, which is definitely one of my favorite features of this acrylograph. I'm going to add in all of my dots, as you know. So for the dark pink, I'm going to have light pink dots and then yellow on the top. I'm also going to go in with a couple of different yellows and then I'm going to go in with the white acrylograph as well. So it's very straightforward. It's a very easy theme this month. The decoration is all the same and not really hard to think about. As I said at the very beginning when I started this blackout bullet journal, I was going to go with coral because it's just easy for me to think of and I don't have to worry all that much. And look how pretty that pink is. If you want to buy any of the products that I'm using in this journal and in this video, head on over to the Archer and Olive website. I'll link all the products I'm using down in the description below. Next up we have a yellow coral and as I mentioned before so the pages are always going to start with the dark pink, light pink, then the yellow colors at the bottom just because I think it looks cool to have that kind of ombre effect I guess you could say. Once I've done this particular coral you can see that there's kind of space at the bottom of this page. Now there's not enough space to add in more habit trackers although technically I could have if I had moved everything up a little bit more. I was debating whether I would put more of the coral at the bottom but I feel like it 
didn't fit and the coral would have to be really small. So I decided that I was just going to do a quote instead. And the quote that I've chosen is, I am creating the life of my dreams. I feel like this is a very good quote to go with a habit tracker because it's only through creating small changes in your habits that you'll be able to create the life of your dreams. Because if you don't change anything, you won't get anywhere. Unless you've already changed things and you're on the right track, in which case continue. But if you're like me, you have to change very progressively and slowly to get to the places that you want to get to. Anyway, those are the two spreads that I've done there. So let's move on to my next one. The next page that I'm going to do is going to be my master list or master to-do list, but I'm just going to write master list. The reason I'm adding this in this month is because, as I've mentioned in one or two videos previously, in November, I am going to Mauritius for my grandma's 100th birthday. It just means that I have a lot of things that I need to get done for the month before we leave. And I just want to have a space where I have an overview of everything that needs to get done before we head off. Hence the master list. The things that I'm going to include on my master list are goals for the month, my to-do list, important dates for the month, my statistics for Instagram and YouTube, because I recently saw somebody do statistics in their bullet journal. And I thought that was such a cool idea. If I find the idea from who it was, I'll add it post edit of this video. Although generally I have it at the end, but I guess this month I won't have it at the end. I will of course add my coral down below. Two different yellows, although I guess on camera it doesn't look like they're two different yellows, they look like the same yellow. In person they also kind of look like the same yellow, but they are supposed to be two different yellows. If I have a video clip of, in different lighting I will add it, although I probably won't be able to get one, but anyway. I will show you the differences. Anyway, let's move on to creating my first weekly spread of the month. We are going into week 44 of the year, which is crazy because I feel like this year has gone by so quickly. I feel like I'm still telling people that I've just moved back to Australia because, you know, I was looking for a bit more stability, except for it has now been like a whole year since I've moved back. So I can't really use that excuse anymore. But anyway, let's not think about that too much. I decided that I was going to do some Dutch doors with some tabs. Now, the way I'm going to do that is by using little corals as the tabs and I'm going to paint them on and then I'll cut them out later. Now this is very reminiscent of my January theme from this year. Now, unfortunately I didn't film that video. I really should have because it was bloody brilliant in my opinion. Although I do have a bunch of setup reels on Instagram if you wanted to go check that out. Otherwise I'll insert a picture of what it looks like. I love the tabs and how they turned out. It was such a fun idea and I wish I had filmed it. Anyway, whatever, it's too late. So for this one, I'm going to have four different tabs because there's going to be four different weeks of the year. First of all, I'm going to draw one coral as you know it's going to be the dark pink as the first tab then with my pencil I'm going to line out the places where I'm going to have different boxes and the first box that you'll see me do is actually going to be my events for the week but specifically just the first four days of the week because as you know I'm a casual staff which means I work specific days of the week and I've recently asked to only work Mondays Tuesdays Wednesdays and Thursdays although actually I've also asked for Mondays off simply to get ready and so I'm just going to be putting my shifts in those four boxes this first box is divided into four days for the week and I'm just going to put my shifts in when I'm ready and I'm going to also fill in the dots of my Dutch door. To write the days of the week, I'm just going to use this dark pink acrylograph and you can't really see what it says, but you know, it looks fine. It looks good. I think it turns out nicely. I was going to maybe use black, but this whole month I haven't used the color black and I kind of dig it. So we're going to leave it. Next up, I'm just going to plan out where my weekly boxes are going to go. Because I've mentioned that I'm going to stop working Mondays and Fridays, it means that I have to get things done on the business side of things for Vero Bujo. So now that I have the Monday, I'm going to actually put four days Days here. So I'm going to have the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm also going to have a Monday. This is because I'm going to bulk do a lot of things on the weekend. And now that my weekend is four days long, I'm going to have the time to be able to do all of these things. So I'm just going to write Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I'm going to write out the initial of the week and then the number just so that it looks a little bit cute. I don't want to write the entire word out because it's a very small page and I don't have the space. Also, just in case you're wondering, this is a B6 bullet journal. So it's very, very small. It's not the typical A5 size. I will do a review on this particular size in another video, but it is actually, I feel, giving me more creative freedom than an A5 or an A4. So there you go. I'm going to use one of the light yellows first, and then I'm going to use a darker yellow to do the Sunday and the Monday down below. 
if you're wondering how I'm going to use it, I'm just literally going to put to-do lists or tasks in the boxes and tick them off once I've done them. Once I've written out my boxes, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my Dutch door. I'm going to grab my cutting board, my X-Acto knife and a ruler and I'm going to cut out the parts that I don't want. I am going to go back in with scissors to kind of refine the edges of the black part of the coral just because I want it to be a little bit more smooth and not so rough around the edges and then that's basically what it looks like. That's the flip when you flip it around and I'm going to pop another coral there but you'll have to come back to watch that because that's going to be in my November weekly spreads. Finally I'm just going to draw a line between goals and to do just because I want it to be distinct and I'm going to have an ombre effect using the different different colors so the different pink to yellow. I think it looks really cool. I don't know if it really translates all that well on camera but I think it looks pretty awesome. And that is the final look. Now here's a quick flip through of all of the spreads that I've prepared today. First we have my cover page. What do you think? Should I fill in the left side of the page at all? Let me know down in the comments. We have my monthly log and my habit tracker. I really love how this looks. It's minimal but it's aesthetic. We then have my master list and my week 44. Now because you've watched to the end of this video, here's a quick sneak peek of what the tabs are going to look like, so come back for that video. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my November plan with me. If you are looking for more inspiration for a blackout bullet journal, you can watch any of these videos next and look out for my November weekly spreads coming soon.